All right. Let's uh, let's get started. Um, first off, my name is Mike Stevens. Um, I'm uh, I work in the Office of Legislation with the Department of Natural Resources, um, and I'm here to talk about the Millennium Reserve. Um, before we get started too early on that Millennium Reserve, we are open to name changes. Um, we've had a lot of people kind of iffy on that name, so. Um, one of them was the Calumet Millennium Reserve uh, and others. So if you have any suggestions, please come up to me and let me know. Um, we're open to changing the name. Um, we don't want it to be, we don't want the sticking point on this thing to be the name of what we're going to call it. So, so we're open to anything you guys like. Um, first, a little brief uh, about what we're trying to do with the Millennium Reserve is, um, first off, we're trying to reconnect uh, Americans and especially children to America's rivers and waterways. Um, the natural, natural landscapes, ranches, uh, and uh, um, places with national significance, ranches, farms, forests, great parks, coasts, beaches, um, by exploring a, a variety of efforts. Um, of our, next issue, our, our next attempt to, for this program is to bring everyone together, bring both state, all state, local, private, uh, private people, uh, private entities, non-government organizations, um, and try to con work to conserve land, water, wildlife, historic, and cultural resources um, while creating corridors and, connect uh, and connectivity across these outdoor spaces. Um, and finally, our last goal in this is to use good scientific uh, management practices. Um, we're not coming in this and trying to do this willy-nilly. We're trying to use all the best uh, available science out there through either soil samples, water samples, trying to get make sure that what we're doing is sustainable for the long term. Um, so that's just the brief out overview of what I'm, uh, what the Millennium Reserve Project is. Um, so we'll get started. Um, first, this is the map of what is now we're calling the Fort Calumet area, and in that that map has is where all those green spaces in there are all the current public lands in that area. And so what we're doing there is trying to make sure that those are protected and eventually we would like to connect all those. And that's what the Millennium Reserve, Reserve Project is. It's to create corridors in between the green spaces to connect the whole South, South Calumet area over to the north, uh, uh, north, north western part of Indiana in the sand dunes. Um, and just because we don't have anything filled in or shadowed in Indiana does not mean that we're not having outreach with Indiana. We actually met this morning with people from Indiana, um, but it's not really I, Illinois' Department of Natural Resources to tell them how to manage their their state, so we're going to let them take their part of the, the Indiana, the northern sand dunes area. Alright, um, and one of the reasons that we have started this program is because of uh, President Obama's Americans Great Outdoor Initiative. Um, and that was, again, to, it was reconnect, it's to reconnect Americans, especially children, to the outdoors. Um, uh, and to use the three points that I had, I had mentioned, build upon local priorities for the conservation of land, water, wildlife, historic, and cultural resources. And that is really why we have been doing public forums and trying to get people's involvement because we want to build on local priorities. And that is actually from, uh, the, this project has actually come from when the President announced this uh, American Great Outdoors Act, he, they came in and had public meetings here in the Chicago area, and from our understanding is that the Calumet region really, really hit those public forums very heavily, and that's what got so much attention, not only from local state, but also from our federal friend, our federal friends in the government. Um, and again, we do, uh, we're a scientific-based agency, so we're going to use the best science available to make sure that, uh, that everything we do is is for the for the best of the area. Um, again, this slide um, we're, this is just partnerships. Um, we are. It's not a hierarchy. It is a, conglom a conglomeration. We are taking people's input. No one has. This is this is the final say. No one one group is above the other, and no and no one agency is above the other. We're 
we're working at this together, and um, we'll try to accommodate as much as we can. Um, however, as you probably know, there are competing interests in everything that comes to conservation and recreation. All right, um, open space and, uh, and trails. Um, our goal is to preserve these, uh, the preservation of the 20, almost 26,000 acres, or 2,600 acres, as well as the 53 miles of biking and hiking trails. Um, it's not only our goal for this Millennium Reserve to protect those right now, but also to create more and create more of a interconnected pathway between the two. If you guys have any questions throughout this, feel free to raise your hand. All right, um, our core, our, our uh, management plan for this revolves around three things. The first is the core properties, the core lands. And the core lands are the ones that have significant scientific and, and uh, endangered resources. Um, that is uh, a, a hedgehog. Hedgwick Marsh and, uh, and Banner Marsh are two prime examples of what core, uh, core properties would be. That, that would be your wetlands and, and your areas that are vital to the sustainability of natural resources. Um, and, and that's what we're focusing on first in this first phase. Um, our second management is called buffer or transition zones. And uh, buffer and transition zones are the areas that are going to protect our core, core, uh, our, our core areas. Um, the buffer zones are there to, they will be both trails, parks, you'll have uh, ball diamonds, um, like rec recreational facilities. This is more for getting a recreational area around the core area to make sure that we have a buffer zone in between if, say, an invasive uh, flower or an invasive species is, is there. We have a buffer around that core area to make sure that we can protect those core areas. Um, and, the, and this will be uh, like yeah, trails, land corridors, the, the bike paths, the, the, the hiking trails, and also there will be habitat, um, just not um, it won't be designated the same habitat as our core areas, which are more precious. More precious is not a great word, but as we deem as a, as a higher priority. Uh, no? All right, uh, so our, our end goal is Restoring one of our goals is to restore Lake Michigan shoreline, um, and they've already—it's already been the process has already begun rebuilding. Um, and I don't know even know if you can call it rebuilding, but they have started to do work on trying to uh, to re to get the, the shoreline back to uh, uninterrupted parkland, um, and and we're that is our ultimate goal is to assist in that and to make uninterrupted parkland along along the shoreline. Um, and, and, and they have been doing a fantastic job so far. We're just, this is a, a little push in the back saying we're going to move a little faster and try to get this done a little, a little faster. Um, another aspect of the Millennium Reserve Project is it's not all about conservation and recreation. There is an economic aspect to the Millennium Reserve Project. And um, and this is what we're really here for. As a member of the Department of Natural Resources, we're out there to protect the endangered species as long as, as well as promote recreation and pr promote conversation, conservation. But uh, in the end, the core areas, that's what they're there for, is to help protect the endangered and threatened species. Um, this one would have looked a lot better with the colors. Uh, imagine all these green areas, all these little areas would be green, and there should be blue rivers and streams all through there. For some reason, when I 
switch it over to PDF, it didn't show up color. Um, but that is our, our, our envisioned green infrastructure. And, and that means not only will you have your parks, your recs, your core areas, but you'll also have um, areas where the land, such as a brownfield, has been reclaimed to a ballpark or a community garden type area where they can, so a community can go plant and then use it as a, at, a, at a food market or something like that, or one of their local, uh, uh, sell it to a local produce thing. My slides are all messed up. Uh, we'll just keep going. Um, so this is what uh, the numbers we have of the core projects, what, what we would be protecting in just those core projects that we have identified so far. And that's, as you can see, a significant amount of, the, uh, of wildlife would be negatively affected if we were not allowed to do this. Um, again, uh, there's a, a commercial aspect to this. And with the commercial aspect, it's, it's mod modernizing the port system. And that is um, to allow not only for more, for more shipping and, and, and business to go through there, but to also allow for the areas around the port districts to have open green space. Because I'm sure many of you are aware that the port district here does have quite a bit of open land um, that is currently um, not being utilized for uh, recreation and conservation purposes. Um, and this is actually what's going to happen here um, in the Calumet area. They're, they're uh, expanding the port system. Um, and uh, I think, yeah, by uh, 2014, um, it will double the capacity um, for the number of ships <coughs> to go through. <coughs> and this is what would happen if that that new port system and, and when it does come into effect in, in 2014 instead of having every all of the uh, a, uh, Asian products go straight to the west coast and then shipped by rail or car they'll, they can come down through the Panama Canal and up the Mississippi and as you know the Mississippi connects to, to the locks and dams to the, the Chicago waterway system um, and this is more cost effective for the people shipping in, in Asia. So we are anticipating a higher number of pr uh, products coming through Illinois with the uh, revitalization of the port. Um, and this again goes into the, the jobs aspect of it, um, jobs and uh, sustainability growth. Um, with the modernization of the uh, international port, um, it will create, as you can see, 12 1,200 near-term jobs and almost 10,000 uh, jobs over the long term. And it has a great uh, potential for a billion dollars um, while also uh, restoring industrial transportation infrastructure and uh, an ecological role uh, for the Lake Calumet Marine System. <coughs> and so this is what we we're trying to uh, trying to do is get to get everyone together um, and work on these enterprise lands and the enterprise lands are the not not the but they're the last part of uh, our management plan and these are the brownfields and the urban agricultural um, and these are areas that have been just over the Great south nice the Calumet area has a lot of uh, Iron work, still iron, the, the soil is not good because of all the iron uh, factories that were in here. And so what we have been doing um, through a new program at IDNR, it's called Mud to Gardens, and we also have a Mud to Parks program. And what that does is it takes mud that has been silted in, because if you're not familiar, the Illinois River is filling in with the topsoil from Illinois farmland. So we'll take the farm, the this silted in area, dredge it, let it sit, let it, let all, and make sure, we do test for contaminants so it's all safe, and then we'll, we'll spread it down, and then we'll create, um, this is an example of an urban, urban agricultural center um, at the city, uh, at Farm City in Chicago. Um, like I said, we have started our, uh, a Mud to Parks program, um, and uh, right now, um, it, I think, 
help set it up. Uh, it was a, it's a two or three year old project. We have not had very, we have not done much with it yet, but we are really amping up to this um, because not only is the Illinois River silting in, but um, a lot of the areas in the Illinois are silting in because of uh, just the, the topsoil is after after harvest it kind of just sweeps into the sweeps into the river. And then, like I said, not only the mud to parks, but we also do mud to gardens. Um, and this is for the brown fields. Um, and this is incorporating. Uh, this is for your uh, your local community gardens. Um, there are not not many places in, in uh, the South Chicago area where you can have a big open field and have a plot of land for each person to say, "This is what I'm going to grow here. This is my part of the garden." And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get people back outdoors and back to farm and back to what Illinois is known for, and that's for agricultural use. And, and what better way to do it than a local garden? Um, and then also, what we're trying to do with this is to provide opportunities for younger people to get out and ha enjoy the outdoors. Um, nowadays, if you have kids or if you have grandkids, you know that they're on their cell phones, they're on their computers. What our job, what our goal is to create enough green space out there to attract them back outdoors. And that's what we're trying to do here. And if we figure if we have bike paths and, and, and parks throughout the Chicagoland area, it may get them out and have some fun. And also, I'm not sure if you guys have heard, but uh, Ford has been talking about creating an environmental center. And they've already um, said that they would help uh, fund the environmental center with a significant amount of money. Now it's just up to us to come up with it. Excuse me. Who did you say was going to help? Ford Motor Company. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Is it? Half? Less than half. Okay. okay. So yeah. You're shaking your head. Yeah. Me? Who oh, Kevin was. Oh. Uh, $26 million on the project and they have $8 million. Okay. Well, it's gone up to $26 it, it's a dream not fulfilled. Well, that's what we're trying to move forward. We're trying to, <laughs> that's why we're here, is to get everyone together, trying to get this, get that ball rolling. Um, so that's just a brief, the brief overview of what the Millennium Reserve Project is. It's, it is there to, let me make sure that's the last one, because, yeah. Because that, that's what the Millennium Reserve Project's there to do. It's to create more green space and create a core, uh, coordinated green space effort. Um, and like I said, we're here, that's why we're here in public forums. We want people's input. This is not not something that we're here just to say, we're going to do, this is what we have planned, take it or leave. This, this is more of you guys helping us tell, you, tell us what you want the use of the land for, and then we can integrate that into our plan. So. That was my 20 minutes, and now I'm open to any discussions that you guys have. So I know the original boundaries were much larger. Yes. What, what are the current boundaries? Can you north, south, east, west? Well, east is obviously the state line. But... Yeah, the, here, the, this is the most current boundary that we have, right? Yeah, right here. So we're right on the, I think that's the, uh, the Cook County line, right? That is. Yeah. All right. So what's the western boundary then? Right. Is that it? I can't read my, I can't read. Um, it's the western avenue. What's that? Or the west? It's a lot further. Yeah, what's? The 294. No. Can't make it up. It's it's. It's an interstate, but I can't make out. Is it 355 up there? Well, it says 294 there, but 294 comes out at an angle, so it's kind of bigger than that. Even it looks like. And then up to the north west corner there, you're just a little bit farther than Dan White Woods. Okay. Yeah. So what then? So west is roughly 294 as it goes north south, and then what's the northern boundary? Well, the northern boundary uh, is uh, 95th Street. 
It's a lot farther yeah, north. Yeah, it yeah, actually, it goes to the mouth of Chicago River. So that was that's ninety second. Ninety second. Yeah. It's a lot farther north of that from this picture here. Right. But yeah, that, we've expanded. It's expanded from the. From from I don't know if you guys saw some of the preliminary maps that we had, but we we the first one stopped. It looks like it goes right up through the police and police stuff there. And we've, we've just kept incorporating because of... Is that, yeah. No, it's way past that. That might be right. I mean, it might be 71st at the golf course up there, even? The Jackson Park, maybe? Or yeah. Well, there was there. discussion of yeah. two of, of two boundaries. Yes. And this has a second boundary on it. Okay, so this... This is. way up here is where our second boundary is going to be. Okay. And, it, and it extends, as you can see over here, it extends all the way to the uh, king. Yeah, so that was the original boundary, right? This, this has been expanded. No, the, the brown one was the original boundary, right? But the, we, the brown one hasn't moved. It, it's moved a little, but the core boundary has moved right. more than, than the initial, the the big I understand map. it goes all the way up uh, by connected to the lake. It goes all the way on the trail and the trail is moved all the way up. Yes. Yeah, that our that is the ultimate goal is to have it connect all the way to the shoreline of Chicago. I think what what is uh, what is not represented on by this map is is how critical the existing uh, environmental sites are that they're they're basic all of the Chicago uh, op uh, open space reserve plan uh, all of those sites are included in uh, in this in this uh, program mm -hmm. and all of the city sites all of the county sites and uh, and the state sites uh, become uh, the, the core, the, the core, and Lake Calumet itself becomes the center of that core, and it's a transportation point uh, uh, for not only rail and auto, but also uh, for waterway. Mm -hmm. So, and 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 that is one of the goals of the Millennium Reserve is to make Lake Calumet a recreational area right. and the surrounding area. Lake Including Calumet. the shores of Lake Calumet, small boating, mm -hmm. you know, public access is, is, the, is the most important thing that, that we're talking about here. And all of the people in this room um, have been uh, fighting that for many years. So. I, I think you, as a, and I, I know I can speak on behalf of the department on this, we're 100% in agreement with you. Um, we're the fifth most populated state, and we have, I, like, we rank on the bottom, bottom three or four with the most public lands available. So, per capita, our public lands is just not very good, and that's really what the whole concept of the Millennium Reserve Project is. Is, is we have an area of Chicago with I don't know, three million in, in in the city right now, and there just isn't enough. In our opinion, there aren't enough outdoor recreation opportunities, and that's and that's the genesis of what this is. And that's why the president had he wanted he had that uh, his his, uh, his plan, and then the governor himself has the No Child Left Inside Act, and so both outdoor outdoor recreation are two things are is, is the one thing on the governor's mind that he really really wants to push forward, and I can tell you that this is one of his uh, his pet projects, um, and. Uh, uh, my director has met with him on a multiple on, on multiple occasions, and, and one of the first things out of his mouth is, "How is this Millennium Reserve project coming?" Um, how is the um, Illinois half of the of the Calumet region being coordinated with the Northwest Indiana half? Um, we and are, do you have a map for the Northwest Indiana. We do not. Um, we just like uh, we. I don't know. If, we just. Had a, a meeting with uh, with the people from the department uh, department of NERPSI sure. from uh, NERPSI yeah the regional planning commission right? yep and uh, and also John Swanson John Swanson that's the guy we met with right. yeah John Swanson and then we're from also NERPSI. meeting with a, a Don Lager to, to help us make the right inroads with people in uh, in the Indiana. Yeah. 
Okay, so New connected. York State is the one that's pushing uh, the Northwest Indiana. Mm -hmm. Don's doing, uh, doing yeah. that. And, and, so we, we, and we are meeting with them within the next two weeks to get their, their side of this so we can have a more comprehensive map. And that will include the Lake Shore, National Lake Shore. That will include, yeah. Because I've seen preliminary maps in it, and it does include quite a bit of the northern. Because yeah. the, the at one point, our, well, there, uh, you'll be having one meeting for both sides? Yes, we yeah. will have joint meetings. And that's, that's and that's not and that's not only that's not only just us in in Indiana, but at some point we'll we'll have to bring in the Port District, the Army Corps, the Department of Interior, and we'll have because it's a it, it's a a multifaceted approach we're taking. Okay, well, and what's the kind of the calendar for that? The meetings? Yeah. Um, Is there? Because um, then you I tentatively, mean, I can say that we will have. Some sort of an idea. Um, it could be as soon as November. Okay. We're we're really moving really fast. Um, I I can't give you an exact time frame, but uh, I know we're meeting with Iowa in the next week or so, or Iowa, Indiana in the next week or so, and then we'll be there. Uh, and, and we'll we'll meet with. We've already met with someone from the part. Or I think it was the assistant director of the Department of Interior. He flew in, took a tour of the area really was excited about the project um, and then went back and we, we've gotten rave reviews from Washington yes. and we've, we've been getting a lot of people signing on board with this, mm -hmm. um, both um, in Illinois and uh, and, uh, and, and Indiana. Um, and the mayor just actually wrote a letter in support of this project for us. Um, so really we're, and that's... We, Which mayor? I'm sorry. Uh, mayor Emanuel. Okay. Just wrote, so wrote, make sure. yeah, wrote a, le a letter in support of this project. Um, and so we're really trying to, to work closely with, with all of our groups. Um, the only sticking point that we've had so far with Indiana is, is the modernization of the international port. When it comes down to money, states usually don't see eye to eye. So that's something that we'll have to deal with on a higher level than me. So I, I can't even speculate on that. I think Michael's concern is that we're so used to meeting with both sides Represented that it seems a little strange that we don't have that much in the way of Indiana, Indiana representation here. Michael is by state, but the rest of us. Well, that's right, and uh, so it's kind of, it's always kind of hard for me to because I've been pushing for by state meetings for um, over a decade now, and um, and so um, and it's it's so silly because it's 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 the kind of that region and. Um, and actually, uh, it's a little bit probably larger on the uh, Indiana side, uh, but uh, it's, it's definitely a bi-state area, and, and it would uh, so much more can get done when you have joint meetings and, and have separate meetings. Oh yeah, I, and, and I I assume that you were planning eventually. Yeah, and, 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 and we are, and and we and we have we have, they they are fully aware of what we're doing, and and I think they they started their preliminary parts of this getting their constituencies and their interest groups on their side together and figuring out what they want. And once they figure out what they want, we'll sit down and we'll just mesh it all together, meld it all together. Do you have any additional information about the modernization of the port? Um, it feels like a sort of new piece of information, this expanded capacity with the Panama Canal mm. and that perhaps an exponential increase in traffic coming through the Illinois port. So. Is that, is that, are we talking about a major, major expansion in the amount of traffic we're going to see in the port tonight? Um, uh, it would be a, 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 an increase. I'm not sure how much, um, but yes, it, it is a, it's a, it's a big undertaking to modernize the port, um, and, I'm, and it will have uh, a bigger capacity. I, I can't speak on how much or to what extent uh, traffic will increase or how much more. But, um, yeah, it will, it will increase uh, large traffic through the international Is that actually uh, uh, going to involve bringing uh, deep water ships up this far and dumping their bills in, into this cabin and bringing more fish to speed? Or is it going to be mostly a great bit of land for transshipping? 
type of, of container area? Well, it's going to be that first on tackling your, your first question about building one. Yeah. I, I also serve on the re, uh, regional coordinating committee for Asian carts. So I know for a fact that <laughs> Illinois has no intention of bringing Asian carts in. And, and we have strict regulations on village water and what you have to do about village water. Mm -hmm. um, to, the, to the other point, um, do I know if they'll bring the big shipping containers up? Um, I'm thinking about using big expanses of land for the parking you know, a lot of craft ones. And that's, not, that's, that's what we're hoping not to, and that's why the modernization will help because yeah. it will reduce their land. Seattle itself and, and, and a port district had modernized its port and, it's, and it created enough land that they have a, um, a park right next to their port, a, a green space, I would call it a park. Yes. Your Iroquois uh, landing area and, and the, um, the, the Cala Harbor Park was just just, just for barges because they hadn't planned on doing uh, any more dredging for the ships as soon as they could come all the way in there. I am not, I'm not familiar with that. I'm sorry, I, I, I can't speak. Um, I would have to. Well, I'm, that, that actually, uh, yeah, I, I would have to check into that and get back to you. Um, if, well, I know they're trying to the port. The modernization of the port will allow for. Lake Calumet to be used more as a as a open open space instead of what it, and more of a green space and allow for the surrounding areas to be a green space. But I'm not sure where exactly the new port, the modernized port, is being built. By. Can, Can you say so the, recreational uh, areas in the Calumet area? Yes. In the Calumet place. Yes. That that was that is the ultimate goal is to the recreation areas around the Lake Calumet. And that includes that includes the the western shore of Lake Calumet, <clears throat> the land bridge that uh, goes uh, uh, to the uh, eastern shore, and uh, Slip Eight, uh, which is in the corner of uh, the the uh, golf course uh, marsh area. And if you if you've been in the golf course and on the on the the veranda and looked across. It's green and it's wonderful birding there, and, uh, and that's uh, will be connected to the open space on the western shore of Lake Calumet. And public access uh, is is a cornerstone to the success of this project. And the people I've been working with, the people on the project, and they understand that. And so. Uh, this is great news for the cabin now. Mm -hmm. Is that the um, bill on the, on the, on the, on the still still on the still in, on, in the state uh, legislature? Vic? That bill that was that was that was, that was supposed to open up the east side, wasn't it? Yeah, no, we failed on that bill until, <laughs> and we failed for the last ten years. And uh, but uh, now this has been the first time that we actually have had um, had access to negotiations with the port authority, and, and that that is that was a major uh, benefit to us in this project. And the port authority has just had some new some turnover turnover on their board, so that we really think we have an inroad to get something done with the Port Authority, so mm -hmm. that's... And they've, they've met with, they, your, your people have met, I don't know which who it was, was uh, whether um, John Wagner or... or uh, Todd May. Maybe, but, but uh, they met uh, with uh, the new chairman of the Port Authority. He's going to be the chairman. And uh, he signed on to the project. Yeah, we we met with uh, quite a few from the Port Authority, and, and 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 in all honesty, I don't. We have not had a single person come after our meeting had a negative a negative view of this because it really it's hard to say it's really hard to go against opening up not only green space but we're trying to modernize 
the, infra the, the infrastructure for, for Come the economy. Come on, give us a break. What else could we yeah. do? And, and that's exactly the point. Of, and, and, I, and that's why I think that this is, we're getting such a groundswell support is because you just said you worked 10 years on that issue on the Lake Calumet to get the Port Authority to give you land. I can go somewhere else and someone will say, I've been working for 10 years to get this parcel of land open. And every single time we hold one of these public forums, it's some, some other a issue where they just won't let us have public access. They don't use it for every, anything. It's great bird watching. It's great trails. It has, it has everything, all the amenities already set up. It's just off limits to the public. And that's what we're trying to do is to convince the, the Port Authority and, and other private industries and, other pro and groups that, that not, not only can you have that land and use that land for your own business goods, but you can also use it for allowing us to, allowing the public to use it as a public recreational land. Um, and that's, and we, and everyone has seemed fairly open to that idea. And, and we're, and we're moving forward. Um, and like I said, we're trying to move forward as fastly, as fast as we can. So uh, we can strike a, strike when the iron's hot. Things that uh, people in this area have been working on for decades. Uh, and uh, one of them has been national park status as sort of a link between the Inam Canal and the dunes. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we can't get that. But can we get, with your proposal here, because I thought I read something about it mm -hmm. in the material that was available, uh, can we get common signage that would link us by state? to all of the marvelous facilities that we have? I can't answer, um, not with 100% certainty, but if when the Millennium Reserve project comes to fruition, I'm sure that everything will be marked as a, as a that you can have access. This is part of the Millennium Reserve thing. So everyone will know that this isn't just one little green area. It branches off throughout the corridors and everything else. And nice brochures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not the state of Illinois. They've cut all of our they've cut well, all of our printing expenses. Oh, well, if you know, if there's a master and, and people can run it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and yes, well, I'm sure Some we'll have. I'm sure we'll have something, we'll like have something online um, with because all of our parks are still online. You can print off a little brochure about the park and the map of the park. So yeah, I'm sure we'll have something like. That. Okay, then two other things. Um, and, and we probably will have brochures. I was just. Okay. Sure. Um, uh, there's some mention here of sports complexes, yes. and we've seen some in Whiting recently. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's this thing called a velodrome mm -hmm. that's uh, already underway. Uh, actually, there's a, a, a temporary velodrome for bicycle racing training okay. that's already set up. Uh, and it hopes to have a permanent home in the U.S. Southworks space okay. uh, once $45 million happens to be raised. Can you see that as part of this? Um, You're talking about soccer stadiums. Yeah, we're talking about that. We'll also we're we're not we're not 100 percent against indoor recreational facilities either. So um, I don't know if a, a bicycle racing track would fall under it, but um, it because we do plan that some of the properties that we will have will have our structures already built on them. So we will use we could use the existing. Ex existing structure to say have a, a community center or something like that. Right, right. he intends to have more than just that. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah. But that would be the basis for it. Yeah, but and and, and, and <laughs> the buffer zones aren't strictly going to be baseball fields and soccer fields. It's, it's right. going to be open land and, and wildlife uh, habitat. It's just, it, it just hasn't been, it doesn't have the, the significance as the, as the core lands that, that, will, that it will be surrounding. Like okay. the wetlands, the marshes, the the the, the other areas that are, are more scientifically significant. Uh, so the far, one. his idea has been perhaps one of the more viable ones for that brown field. Mm -hmm. So far, his idea has been one of the most viable ones for that brown field, that existing brown field. For the five hundred and sixty-seven acres. It yeah, and 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 that, and that brown and and that's we can do that on brown fields. Is we can use the the mud from mud to parks, move, bring it up. And use it to make create soccer fields, uh, like yeah, soccer fields, uh, football fields, whatever they baseball. Fields. And uh, the third thing, uh, if we developed a Calumet curriculum, mm -hmm. 
that would be uh, pre-K through college. Would that fit nicely into what you're talking about here too? Oh, we would love it. We would love that. We, we want this to be used as an educational tool, the Millennium Reserve Project. And that's why we have our fingers crossed that there's that education, the Ford Educational Center. That, but, and, and besides that, we're, we, we, not only do we want, would like that, but we would also like for a chance for teachers and students to go out and go walk through a marsh or walk through a wetland and see exactly the different plant life, the different, the different <laughs> flora and fauna. So yes, we, this is, this is a, a, is, is a, as much as an educational thing as it is a, a outdoor recreation thing. Okay, because there are already pieces of this in place. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. No, so so I, if, if it were somehow or other subsumed under this project, that would be a good thing? Yeah, I'm sure that would be something that we would uh, be open to. This is, a, is something that we want, we want uh, kids to be greatly involved in. Yes. So it does sound like you're reaching out to a lot of partners. And is that through the process? You'll be identifying who some of those environmental education yeah, we are and working with them to develop some of those programs? Yeah, we, we're open to meeting with uh, a large number of people. Like uh, I have Chicago Wilderness helped set up this meeting for us, and, and they're kind of an umbrella group for a lot of, of different groups throughout the Chicago area. Um, we're meeting with uh, like uh, people from Indiana, and we're also meeting with uh, uh, different groups um, within the state that just have an interest. Um, our on this issue, our we really have an open door policy on this. We're we're there. We're at the stage right now where we need to accumulate as much information as we can to make sure that everything is, that everyone is, is on board from very from the very beginning. And actually, that was my follow-up point, so good segue. Um, is there a way for people to provide feedback that might not have been able to come to a meeting like this? Is there an online way of submitting? They have been working on getting um, a web a website, uh, both on ours and the and the governor's website. I'm not sure where it is at this moment. Um, I'm, I'm not. I wasn't with the IT people, um, but. Uh, but that will be a plan, um, and if in the meantime, I can give you a card, and I'd be more than willing to take all your emails and disperse it to the right people. The question, I mean, you've probably said this, but I just want to refocus it. A lot of people, a question I've been hearing a lot lately is, what was the impetus of this? Why all of a sudden did you I, I think I know the answer, but I'd like to hear it. Uh, it was both, it was two things. It was the uh, President, what was the, what do you call it? He called it the, uh, the American Great Outdoors. Yeah, America's Great Outdoor Initiative. And then our Governor Quinn has his No Child Left Inside initiative. And those kind of dovetailed together into this. And also, the initiative why we got this Millennium Reserve Project is because of all the support that the Calumet area came and said um, when, they, when they did the, the, the president came in and had his public forum. Um, from what we understand, is uh, Calumet area represented itself very well in those meetings, and uh, and, and drew attention from a lot of high-ranking federal officials and, and governor, and, and we took advantage of, of the the momentum that you you guys have created. I was wondering if, if this is going to be a way of. Uh, providing money to local people, uh, students and uh, groups to help uh, clean up some of these areas that may be filling up with uh, non-native uh, invasive uh, plants and brush and trees and stuff like that. If you're trying to make a prairie, you want to... Um, at this point in, in this, in the Millennium Reserve, um, there, <coughs> there has been, there's not been talk about that yet. Um, however, the department created um, we well, we didn't create it. Um, we revamped a Illinois Youth and Conservation Work Program, um, and so that was we we yeah, sent 2,800 kids um, out um, to local nonprofits to help do the maintenance with uh, removing non-native and and really just all around maintenance around parks and and other recreational areas. And then we also have uh, um, our own within the state parks. We we have uh, the temporary workers who do that 
and then uh, each Earth Day we have Earth Day in the parks, and that's where any local school community can call their local uh, state park, and we will take them out, um, either plant trees, uh, take care of a grassland, or get rid of some non-native plants. Um, just all sorts of activities to try to do that. Um, the problem right now, and I'm sure most of you are aware of it, um, the state is not in a great fiscal situation. So talking about um, funding for schooling programs and stuff like that, it's just hard for it's hard for DNR to say when schools are getting cut by whatever they are to say come in and say we want to give them more money just for this program. It's, it's just a, it's a hard financial time here in the state. Yeah, I know that. So assuming this, we get named Millennium Reserve, whatever it's going to be called, and it actually happens, we get mm -hmm. the blessing from the feds, then uh, funding would be available for what kinds of things? Would it be strictly for programming? Would it be on the ground restoration work? Would it be land acquisition? Do you it know would, what those? It would be, uh, it, it would be land acquisition and restoration and maintenance. It, it, would, be all, it would be all that, um, it, and it would be a whole, litany of things but mainly the act for the first core project it will be acquisition and maintenance so the focus really would be on the preservation of the land first and foremost mm -hmm. for cur for the core for the core areas and we do want to expand those core areas we don't want to just rely on what we already have it's, this is preserve what we have and expand greatly on it. Uh, the change of title. Yeah. About by state. Eleanor wants to take credit for this one. <laughs> but for this half, yes. But for this <laughs> half. All right. Um, because the Calumet, the Calumet region Cal is by state. The yeah. Calumet region? Yeah. Well, we could call it the Calumet Millennium Reserve. Okay. Sure. You guys yeah. like that? Yeah. That was actually yeah. one of the reserves. The Calumet should be in there. The Calumet reserve, uh, uh. just that. Yeah. And, and that's actually, that's what has been for the most part, what the it suggestions yeah, that we've had. Is, that's is what added. it is, yeah. That is what it is, and I think that's what the community's called it for many years. Yeah. Calumet reserve? Yeah. Well, the Calumet region, but it, it, okay. to add that, to change the status of the reserve, I think everybody would be excited about that. Okay. Good idea. Good. Increasing the stature. <coughs> <clears throat> Any other? Damn, uh, I this early. I, I, I was instructed to say something about uh, the message from the Calumet yeah. Stewardship Initiative, which is sort of the Calumet version of Chicago Wilderness, to keep it simple. But um, it is a bi state effort. There's, uh, I don't know, I guess we're pushing 40 different organizations that are involved, on both. Uh, uh, 41 now. 41, all right. They're social, they're business, they're, uh, you know, obviously conservation groups and museums and elements, but, uh, you know, we've all come together over many years now to really focus on kind of that coordinated efforts. There's no staff or funding or anything like that. It's just a, a belief in, uh, in this region and desire to preserve the natural areas here, but also engage the business that's here. So, uh, we're happy that you came out tonight to talk to us as, as members of the community. I think there's a really great cross-section here, both staff members of different organizations, but also just really regular, uh, uh, very long committed uh, citizens that live in the region. So you're really speaking to a, a, a good group and we appreciate it. You know. Well, I want to you know you under, you were, you're competing against uh, uh, the Sierra Club and the local uh, problem with uh, coal-fired plants on the horizon. <laughs> so, yeah, tonight there's, uh, yeah, so tonight there's that meeting, and otherwise this room would have been filled up. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. But, but, cool part of tonight. but is it tonight's the uh, cement plant? Yeah, the cement, cement plant. plant. Yeah. There's an air, EPA air permit uh, <coughs> hearing tonight at the Alpharma Yacht. And like Laura was saying, everybody has time to get over there if you want to. It's <laughs> seven to nine. You still have time. <laughs> well, if I'm going to help you out, I'm not going to hold you. <laughs> no, but I, I do want to uh, I want to thank all of you guys for coming. Um, not the best weather, and apparently you have other things to do. So I'm glad you guys came. Um, but we just we really wanted uh, as, as a department and as a state 
and uh, with other shareholders. We want to. We really want to bring in as many people as we can. Um, and like I said, I, I have business cards, and if any of you want to grab one after this, um, feel free to shoot me an email. Um, I'm, I'd be more than happy to help. Uh, if I don't know the answer, I'm sure I can help. Help find someone who can. It's, uh, I think. I think we can all agree that this is a project that we really want to see move forward, and I think that. Uh, Within the next two, three months, you'll see quite a bit of action. I will, uh, we will, we'll keep everyone here in the loop and let you guys know what's going on.